Good evening, good evening, good evening. Praise be to God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We bless the Lord. We'll give others time to get on, and we'll get started. Praise God. Wonderful. You all are on time. I almost made it late, too. Thank you, Lord. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious, kind God, we bless you tonight. God, we ask that your word, God, will come alive within each of us, God. We thank you, God, as we open our Bibles tonight, God, that you will open our hearts to your words of truth. Help us, oh God, to make the words, the very words that we study tonight, become fabric of our lives. God, we thank you. God, we need you. You're our rock. You're our deliverer. And God, I ask that you give us wisdom, Lord, as we are here in this world. Help us to have compassion for one another. Help us to share what we know about you, Lord, so that others can also find their strength in you. Protect us, God. Guide us. Direct us, oh God. And have mercy on our country. Have mercy on this world, O oh Lord. Lord, we love you. And may your scriptures tonight come alive within our spirits as they will heal us, teach us, inspire us, restore us, and cleanse our hearts. Lord, we thank you. We bring it to you, God, tonight. We bring the world to you tonight. We bring America to you. We bring ourselves to you. And God, we pray now that you will guide us by your Holy Spirit as we study your word. And we pray all this in the name of your precious and holy son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We bless the Lord tonight. I hope you have your hand out uh, with you tonight. Uh, please go to your email. It is there waiting if you haven't already opened it. And we're going to study tonight. Uh, and you will see the topic of your lesson there. And uh, I'll give it to you just in case you don't have it already. But we're going to talk tonight about when you follow Christ, you can't lose everything. When you follow Christ, you can't lose everything. When you follow Christ, you can't lose everything. So much of what God has promised to you is preserved for you in the heavenly realm. God will get you through this really hard season. He will do that. Our background, just to talk to you a little bit about a background, I'm looking at Genesis, the 42nd chapter here. The 42nd chapter, I will be in chapter 42, I will be in chapter 39, and I have much of it, much of this on your handout. But let me just tell you a background of why we say you can't lose everything. Jacob, uh, the son of Isaac and the grandson of Abraham, had 12 sons, including Joseph and the youngest son, Benjamin. The 10 older brothers had sold Joseph into slavery and allowed Jacob to believe his son had died. And Jacob's heart was broken. And later when the famine swept across the land, the 10 older brothers traveled to Egypt uh, to buy grain only to be received by Joseph, the second most powerful man in the empire under Pharaoh. And they didn't recognize him. So Joseph began to use this opportunity to see that his youngest brother hadn't fallen prey to their jealousy. And he kept one brother in prison and sent the other nine back to Jacob, to the daddy, demanding that they return with Benjamin to prove they weren't spies. So in the middle of that story, Jacob utters one of the most defeated phrases someone can say out loud. When his sons explain uh, all that is happening and, and what Joseph is requiring of them, Jacob exclaims to them, chapter 30, 42, verse 36, when he thought that what Joseph was requiring, 
He said, their father Jacob said to them, you have deprived me of my children. Joseph is no more and Simeon is no more. And now you want to take Benjamin? He said, everything is against me. Jacob thought everything was against him. And I know I've said that before. I've said that every now and then. Look, seems like everything is going wrong. Everything is against me. Have you ever said that? Well, you will find that we lose a couple of battles. And even though we acquire a uh, guaranteed eternal victory, we still proclaim, I just can't win. And some of us might just say, I just can't win for losing. And then there might be a relationship that falls apart, maybe even more than one relationship. And then we declare, everyone has abandoned me. Then, oh, don't let the economy, the economy takes a turn downward. And we run into financial trouble and we decide I've lost everything. As soon as we lose that money, we say, I've lost everything. When we speak in those absolute terms, hear me, everything is wrong. Nothing is going right. My whole life is falling apart. What we really doing is agreeing with the enemy, the liar, Satan. Satan is a liar and he comes to whisper those things to you. And when we do that, we're ignoring God's richest and deepest blessings, uh, forsaking our faith in his promises. And we're agreeing with the one who whispers such lies into our ears. So we have to be careful of what we say. The truth for every Christ follower who walks the earth is that, we are more than winners. You know that. Romans 8, 37 tells us that. Romans 8, 31 tells us, if Christ be for us, who can be against us? And then Romans 8, 37 say, we are more than conquerors. We cannot be beaten. And I want you to hold on because God wants to speak to you tonight. We cannot ultimately lose everything because so much of what God has promised to us is preserved in the heavenly realm in which nothing wastes away. So when trials arise like this pandemic, we don't need to feel defeated, but instead we need to do these four actions. And these are the four actions I need you to take. The four actions are there. Remember the promises of God. You know your pastor going with the same letters, don't you? Remember the promises of God. Rely on the providence of God. Rest in the presence of God. Respond with the patience of God. I'll say them again. You have them there. When these things and everything is turned upside down, we need to do these four actions. Remember the promises of God, rely on the providence of God, rest in the presence of God, and respond with the patience of God. In the face of insurmountable difficulties, we need to put everything else aside. Things that so easily distract us. We need to put them aside. And guess what we need to do? We need to pray. Pray. There's no better place to be than to be in prayer when trouble comes. We sing the song, I I'm so glad trouble doesn't last, last always. But even when trouble comes, we need to pray. Hebrews 4.16 says, let us therefore come boldly to the where throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We need that help now. You haven't lost it all. Don't let the enemy bamboozle you. You can never lose it all. You're just going through a very hard moment right now. And God is going to see you through anything that you're going through. When you follow Christ, you can't lose everything. He will help us get through this. How many times have you heard uh, the saying, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger? And that's true. We can turn to God and his words during times of adversity. Why do we turn to him? 
in the times of adversity. We turn to him for strength and we turn to him for comfort. Amen. When we put our faith in him, he will guide us to a path of happiness and peace. We know the word, Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. And what will he do? He will direct your path. He will guide us to the path of happiness and peace. So let's look at the first action that we're going to take tonight. Are you with me? I pray that you are. The first action is remember the promises of God. Do you hear what Jacob says? Listen to what Jacob said in verse 36. I'm in chapter 42 of Genesis. Joseph is not and Simeon is not. And you're going to take away Benjamin. All these things are against me. Here we see jo uh, Jacob as he really is. A negative, horizontal thinking man, thinking man who's pulling his hair out in fear. He, in other words, he's questioning. He's saying, where is God in all of this? Everything is against me. Where is that God that we talk about? What happened was, and sometimes we do this, Jacob forgot the promises of God, the promises to his son, Joseph. Do you recall that Joseph had two dreams? Oh, you would enjoy it if you would just go back and read from chapters 39 all the way to chapter 42. You will enjoy it. Do you, and and Jake, Joseph had the dream. And one of the dreams in, in, involved the harvest and the other involved the heavens. And he told these dreams to his son, uh, brothers. And these dreams indicated that all the rulers of the land would be under Joseph's control and that Joseph would one day rule and reign. Like Jacob, instead of worrying through this pandemic, thinking about all that is wrong, we must remember God's promises. Remember God's promises. This is Jacob. Jacob forgot the promises of God. He forgot the promises to his son. And we must not forget the promises of God. God's words, God's word is filled with what? Promises from our creator to provide, to deliver. The Bible is the ultimate source for truth and God is faithful to fulfill all his promises. But if you don't know those promises, you can't claim them. And the only way to know those promises is to study God's word. So when you go through life not knowing what God has promised you in his word, you will be filled with anxiety. But when you're filled with the word of God, oh my God, fear has no place. Anxiety has no place. And to overcome fear, you must know, you must trust and you must remember what God has promised to do in your life. Listen to this promise. I gave it to you on your uh, handout. Isaiah 40, 31. He said, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get what? Weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's a promise. Look at Isaiah 41 and 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's a promise. Look at some other promises that I may not have given you. Exodus 14. Exodus 14, verse 14. He says, the Lord, oh, I like this one. Exodus 14, 14. You need to memorize that. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. In other words, be still and let the Lord fight your battle. Exodus 14, 14. That's another promise. Psalm 27, verse 5. For in the day of trouble, he will keep you safe in his dwelling. He will hide you in the shelter of his sacred tent and set you upon a rock. Tell yourself, that's another promise. Oh, Psalm 46, 1. We know this by heart. God is our what? Refuge and strength and ever-present help 
in trouble. That's a promise. Watch this. Oh, God is talking to us tonight. He's helping us tonight. Isaiah, I'm back at Isaiah. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. But now, this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You're, you are mine, he says. Look at this promise. This is a promise. Verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, they will not, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. That's a promise. But now I'm going back to the New Testament. Second Thessalonians, the third chapter. Look at the promises of God. When you know the promises of God, you will not have anxiety. Look at chapter 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. That's a simple verse to memorize. You ought to memorize that verse. He's And you didn't probably didn't realize that it was in 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. And he will strengthen you. He will protect you from who? The evil one. That's a promise. So when we are grieving, when we are mourning, when we are doubting, when we are struggling, or uh, uh, when we are panicking, or uh, 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 when we can't catch our breath, we can hold fast to the Lord's promises. When tragedies come, like what we're in, and when we find ourselves questioning God, we can go back to his word and remember his faithfulness to his people. God does keep his promises. When you follow Christ, you can't lose everything. So we find our first action. We will get through this, this, if we remember God's promises. And the second thing, I hope you stay with me because it's not going to take us long. He says, do what? My second P, rely on the what? Providence of God, the divine providence of God. Divine providence is the governance of God by which he with wisdom and love, he cares for and directs all things in the universe. It's by his, he, because he's sovereign. The doctrine of divine providence asserts that God is in complete control of all things. I gave that to you. He is sovereign over you. He's sovereign, the universe as a whole, the physical world, the affairs of nations, human destiny, human successes and failures, the protection of his feet, uh, 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 people. God is in complete control of all things. Believe that. Believe that. Rely on the providence of God. God, when we go back to Joseph, look, look, there was a reason Joseph had to go through this. Jo God allowed Joseph's brothers to kidnap him, sell him as a slave. I like this Sunday school story. And then lie to his daddy for years about uh, Joseph's faith. And, and this was wicked, and God was displeased with this. Yet, at the same time, all of their sin worked toward a greater good. Joseph ended up in Egypt, where he was made the prime minister. Hold my mule. Joseph used his position <clears throat> to sustain the people of a broad region during a seven-year famine. How many days have we been sheltering in place? Oh, my God. Here we looking at a, 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 a seven-year famine, including his own family. And if Joseph had not been in Egypt... Before the famine began, millions of people, including the Israelites, would have died. We have to rely on the divine providence of God. Divine providence is taught in that verse that we all know, Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things, God works for what? <clears throat> the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. All things, God means all things, 
all things. Look what Joseph went through. God directs all things, seen and unseen, good and evil, uh, 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 inanimate and animate, toward a worthy purpose. Whatever it is we have to go through, God is working it for good. We may not always understand the reason behind every event that transpires in the world and in our lives personally and individually, but God wants us to trust him because he always works things out for our good. So the Joseph narrative tonight contained in, oh, you need, I told you uh, chapter 39, but uh, if it is contained in chapters 37 and 39 through 50 is one of the best illustrations of God's providence. You need to walk with uh, 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 Joseph. You need to know not only did he have to go through the pit, <laughs> but he had to go to uh, 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 Potiphar's house. He had to go to the prison. All those peas. That's why Pastor had to use her peas tonight. And then before he can get to the palace, all those things, the pit, part of his house, being falsely accused, and then the prison, all of it was working for Joseph's good. And God had the providence in line. God was in complete control of everything that happened in the life of Joseph. The entire process of Joseph's fall and rise to power was God's doing. And it was marvelous in his eyes. His release from prison because of his God-given interpretation skills. His ex exhortation to power and the opportunity to help his family during the famine all point to God's providence. Oh my goodness, how he was thrown in the pit. Then he went to Potiphar's house and Potiphar's wife falsely accused him. But my God, I'm going to show you something tonight. Oh, when you're on God's team, God is in control. God's providence will work to your good. God is never out of control. You need to tell yourself that tonight. God is never out of control. We may be out of control, but God is never out of control. So we find here, we think about it. Satan can do his worst. Even the coronavirus that is tearing the world apart is working toward a greater final purpose. We can't see it. We don't know it. But we're going to be able to see the history, if we're still here, that it was working toward a greater final purpose. We can't see it yet. But we know that God allows things for a reason and that his plan is good. And I know it must be frustrating Satan right now. No matter what he does, he finds that his plan uh, uh, can never throw us and something good happens in the end. I know Satan is upset because there is something good on the way. And if you're following Christ, you can't lose everything. We will get through this pandemic. If we remember God's promises, if we rely on God's providence, and next, I told you, we'll be finished soon. Oh my goodness, still daylight maybe. Look at the third P, rest in the what? Presence of God. My brothers and sisters, these are the things that we must do. We must do. We got to remember his promises. We got to rely on his providence. And then we've got to rest in the presence of God. I thank God that everybody has caught on now to Isaiah 26 and 20. It just blesses my socks off every time I think about it because God knows what he's doing. He's telling us Oh my God, to, to, to come and go in our rooms and shut the door behind us. Oh my God. He say, and stay there for a while until the wrath of God passes by. God is protecting us. And while we're there, we should rest in the presence of God. There are various types of hope that we can hold on to when we feel like our world is falling apart. Psalm 62, 5 says, Find rest. I gave it to you. Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. Where? Where do you find rest? He said, find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. Not in material things. Not in a person. Not in your position. Not in your wealth. 
not in your name. He said, but you can find rest. Oh my God. In God alone. Alone means nobody else. My hope comes from him. And rest for hope allows you to sleep at night because you know tomorrow is in God's hands. I, 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 I can remember, and I've always been this way, especially my sister, Minister Queen, when I lived with her in Washington, D.C., I would go into my room and she would call me in about two or three minutes. She could not believe Grace is already asleep. Same thing with my husband, Deacon Washington. My head hits the pillow. I'm gone to sleep. I, I, I just fall asleep. And when you know that you have no cares, you have no anxieties, and it's true. Oh my goodness. They just could not believe that I would fall asleep that quickly. When you realize that tomorrow is already taken care of by God alone and the hope you have in him, then you can find rest. Amen. It's easier to sleep tonight if you know tomorrow is in God's hands. Take no thought for tomorrow. God has already taken care of it. My God, he knows what you're going to do. He knows what's on your personal agenda. He knows what he wants you to have on, on, the, on your agenda uh, concerning him. God knows. Take rest in the presence of God. I like falling asleep quickly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you ask them if you run into them how quickly I would fall asleep. You don't have to worry. You don't have to panic and, 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 and pant and all just fainting. Know that God, you can rest in his presence. Hallelujah. And when I think about now with meetings and sporting events, mm, and you know your pastor loves football. But oh my goodness, it'll be selfish for me to just be praying, God, please let this let up by football season. Lord God, you know how I love football. Now, now that might be selfish. I, I don't want it to let up until God says so, until we know that we will not be losing lives. But with, with all of the sporting events, y'all can have basketball. I like the basketball when it's uh, uh, playoff time. But my football, I was so desperate the other night. I went back and watched the replay of the Super Bowl. I watched, I watched uh UGA the other night play Baylor. I just love football. And with the sporting events and restaurants being shut down, but guess what is happening? With meetings, sporting events, and restaurants being shut down, watch this. Time is being gift wrapped back to you. God has wrapped time up and he's given it back to you. Now, how we choose to spend that time will either fuel more anxiety or help us become less anxious. How are you going to fuel that time? Are you going to rest in the presence of God or are you going to let anxiety take part? So whether or not we can experience or sense God, he is always there with us in our trouble. His presence is is an objective fact, even in the times when we can't feel him. God is fully and completely here. You know what he told the uh, disciples when he was given the commission in Matthew 28, 20. He said, behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. He's always with us. And, and, and this reality supports and empowers us to continue. When you could just say that, it, uh, it, it helps you to lift yourself. It, 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 it does empower you to continue to go forward it's like a kid uh, 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 playing a baseball game in a large championship game and not being able to see his dad in the bleachers he knows daddy is up there but he can't see his daddy in the bleachers he still knows dad is there cheering him on the same with God we can't see him, but we know he's there. He's there cheering us on. He's telling us to rest in his presence. Amen. So do not fear. He says in Isaiah 41, 10 again, for I am with you. Amen. Be like a kid. You know, your dad is up in the bleachers. He's cheering you on. Amen. I told you earlier, Exodus 14, 14, say that he'll fight your battle. He'll win that game for you. Amen. So the Bible clearly identifies the reason. Joseph, watch this. Joseph succeeded in everything he did because the Lord was with him. 
the Genesis. If you have your Bible open, go to Genesis 39 verses 2 and 3. It tells us, oh my God, let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get that. It says there, I love that. This is why Joseph succeeded because the Lord, it says in Genesis 39 verses 2 and 3, and the Lord was with Joseph. Hallelujah. And he was pros he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Pharaoh, I mean, had put him in charge of everything. Look at verse 3. And his master, look at this. See, you can be a testimony to somebody. Joseph was a testimony to Pharaoh. Because look what verse 3 said. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hands. No wonder. I got to read verse 4. He says, and Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had put into his hand. Pharaoh saw that God was with him. Pharaoh said, uh-huh, I may not have believed in this God, but there's somebody with Joseph. And he trusted that God. And he put everything in Joseph's hand. And for the sake of Joseph, the Lord blessed Potiphar's household and all that he had. That's what verse 5, verse 5 telling us. Look at verse 5. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house. Watch this. And over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for jo who, for who say for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. My, my, my. Here Potiphar prospered because God was with Joseph. And, and when, when Potiphar purchased Joseph and God was with Joseph, Potiphar saw the fact that God was with Joseph. And when Joseph was falsely accused by his wife, thrown into prison because of a lie, the main prison guard knew that God, let's go, let's go, go to verses 21. Look, the, the prison guard even knew that God was with Joseph. Look at verse 21 in chapter 39. This is better than grits, you all. Look at verses 21 through 23. Now, you know, if I was face to face, I'd ask somebody to read this. But listen, verse 21 in chapter 39. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed. Now, now this is when Joseph was in prison. Okay. And showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners <laughs> that were in the prison. Now, Potiphar has given him everything in his household. Now, here the uh, uh, God keeper giving all the prisoners to Joseph. And whatsoever they did there... He was the doer of it. Verse 30, 23. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. My goodness gracious. I'm so excited. I, I'm talking so fast. I'm just excited about this story with Joseph. Even the God now putting him in charge of everything in the prison. Oh my goodness. Think about it now. When we're walking through the storms of life and we're handling things biblically by being truly at rest in the presence of God, we're not fretting, fret, fretting. We're not worrying. But what are we doing? Worshiping God in the midst of a storm. You can't do anything but worship God. When you know God is with you, you can't. How much of a witness, witnessing tool is that? That others can see that the Lord is with you. Are you living that kind? of life that somebody can say, I can see the Lord with you. I can see God all over you. And in Christ, we are in his presence 24 seven. Amen.
Not only is God an omnipresent God, but God is present with those of us who are saved by day and night through the person of the what? Indwelling Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, he left the Holy Spirit indwelling with us, in us day and night. And the greatest encouragement and truth that Joseph was able to hold on to was the fact that God was with him. Oh my goodness, I've read verse 2, I read verse 21. It's a blessing. God is with us. He's with us in the midst of the peaks of life. And it's easier to sense God's presence when things are going well, isn't it? We can always say, oh, God is good. Everything going well because there's not too much to think about. There's not too much to worry about or have anxiety about. But what usually happens when things go south, huh? What usually happens when things go south? We experience uh, spiritual amnesia <laughs> and we start to think and feel that God's presence has left us. He never leaves us nor forsake us. That is the farthest from the truth. The enemy will lie to us and tell us God has left us, but, be re but rest assured, God is there with you. I don't care how turbulent it is. I don't care how difficult it is. God is with you. Amen. We will always face our, our, our devastating problems and conditions in life. We're going to always have things to go wrong. That, that is inevitable. But even when there is no clear path, no clear solution, or you don't have an answer from God, we are not without support. Resting in God's presence gives us divine strength. I said again, when you say, I know God is with me. It seems like something comes in it. It just divinely strengthens you. We serve a God who is omnipresent. And if we're in Christ, he is never uh, 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 with us. Uh, he, he, he is forever with us, no matter what. It doesn't matter where you are. God is still on the throne in the midst of anything and all circumstances, even during this pandemic. He's a God. Oh, the Bible says a God who sits high, looks low. And he's not just sitting high and looking low. But guess what he's doing? He takes actions. He takes action. Psalm 113 verses 4 through 6 says, For the Lord is high above the nations. His glory is far greater than the heavens. Who can be compared with the Lord our God who is enthroned on high? Far below him are the heavens and the earth. He stoops to look at them. God is a God who sits high. He looks low and he takes actions. My God, my God, rest in God's presence. When you lie down tonight, oh God, be assured that you don't have to be anxious about tomorrow. Be assured that God is watching over you. Be assured that he never slumbers nor sleep. Oh, be assured that he is right there with you. When we follow Christ, you can never lose. We will go through this. We'll go through that. And when the pandemic is over, something else may come. Whatever we go through, if we remember God's promises, rely on God's providence, rest in the presence of God. Lastly, whew, respond with the patience of God. When you go through, you can respond with the patience of God. Want to talk about Joseph again? That's my boy tonight. The things we have read about Joseph, especially during the tribulation period, was not something that lasted one or two months. You heard me earlier. The famine lasted for seven years. And what he went through didn't just last one or two months. In fact, it took about 13 years from the time Joseph was sold to Egypt to the time he stood before Pharaoh. If you look between Genesis 37 verse 2 and Genesis 41 verse 46, if you look between Genesis 37 verse 2 and Genesis 41 verse 46, you're going to find that it took about 13 years for, from the time Joseph was sold in Egypt to the time he stood before Pharaoh. 
Joseph, during all that time, displayed great patience. Read about him. He displayed great patience. He didn't lose it with his brothers. He didn't lose it with Jacob. Patience is something that we need. Oh my God. I know many people are saying they have cabin fever. But when you think about cabin fever, just go and rest in the Lord. Go and find his word. Seek him. Play hide and seek. Go and find God. He said, if you search for me early, you will find me. Patience is something that we need, especially in difficulties like today. Romans 12, 12 says, be patient in tribulation. That's in the Bible. That's a command from God. Romans 12, 12. He says, be patient in tribulations. Amen. God has appointed a time for his word concerning Joseph to come to pass. And up to then, the word of the Lord tested Joseph. And the things, therefore, that Joseph suffered were not the result of bad luck or bad circumstances, but the steps that God had arranged in his plan for his life. And these were trials that God had planned in order to build Joseph what was necessary for the next step. When we're going through something, began to ask God, what are you teaching me? What am I to learn from this? I, I, I just believe that, that God had a way that he wanted more time from his people. I mean, God didn't just shut the United States. I mean, the entire world. You can't play with God. And so when you're going through, not people talk about bad luck and bad circumstances. No, these are the steps that you, that God has arranged for your life. In. But God, do you have to do it that way? Yes. Had he, he had arranged in Joseph's life for him. Those were the plans. And these were the steps that God had planned in order to build him oh, to, for the next step. He had to go from those different steps to get to the palace. And as we think about that, Romans 5 verses 3 through 5 says it, it concerning tribulations. Look at Romans uh, 5, 3 through 5. I gave it to you concerning tribulations. And he says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. He said glory in tribulations. Oh, my God. Knowing that the tribulation worketh what? Patience. And what did that fourth action say? Respond with patience. And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And hope make it not a shame. Because the love of God is shared abroad. Where? In our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The love of God. Amen. He gives us that. James 1 verses 2, 3, and 4 says, My brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. He said, knowing that the testing of your faith. Now, I, and I want to say this about the testing. You know, you, you have this where... Uh, uh, the government and our governing body ask us not to meet at uh, our physical uh, church buildings, uh, uh, but let us do it virtual and all. And then you have those who uh, define the law. Uh, be careful of that. Uh, I, 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 I've just gotten so much bad news when, when you defy the law. You know, don't test God. I am the Lord thy God. You shall not test God. When you define the law, when you define God's word and trying to prove a point of something, you're tempting God. The Lord thy God, you shall not tempt. You don't tempt God. So be careful of that. And, and, and we have to be careful and prayerful. Well, I'll say like this. Uh, your pastor won't be at 3980 Panthersville Road until... Uh, 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 our leaders, uh, we're taking instructions and there is a lot of misinformation. 
But you have to know what to listen to, the doctors and the scientists, and be very sure. Amen. Don't let the devil trick you. Amen. Oh, my goodness. You've heard so many reports. I got another email the other day where this pastor should have known. He should have. There's a difference in faith, foolishness, and presumption. Faith, foolishness, and presumption. That's foolishness. To, to not do social distancing. That's foolishness not to shelter in place. So we have to be very careful and do exactly what they're telling us to do. Only the essential that should make the runs. Have someone uh, 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 personal in the home to make the uh, errands for the household. But do not tempt the Lord thy God. Uh, and, and, and do these things. It's not good. A pastor fail a pastor. Fell dead the other day. Just two days ago, I got the article. He fell dead. Because why would you have? And furthermore, let me say this, Love Life and guests. If Pastor asked you to come to Love Life on 39 Panthersville Road, defy me. Do not come, please. Do not come. Because that's ignorance. That is ignorance. That's foolishness. That is not faith. And so we have to be very, very careful that we listen to the Lord. He says that, that, that knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. We have patience. We're going to wait until this is over. And when it lets up, then we will convene. Then we will see each other face to face. So I pray that you have heard from God tonight. Trials are not necessarily things plan for our bad. I want you to get that in your spirit. And somebody said, oh, you're just having a lot of bad luck. You're just going through a lot of bad circumstances. Don't listen to it. Don't, don't even uh, uh, debate with anyone about it. In contrast, for the man that loves God, all things work together for good. And this certainly also includes trials and tribulations. We're going to have them. They are inevitable. And if therefore it is a time where the questions uh, seem too many and the answers too few, don't lose courage. Let me say that again. If there is ever a time where the question seems like it's so many questions and the answers are so few, don't lose courage. What you do you do these four things. Remember the promises of God. Rely on the providence of God. Rest in the presence of God. Respond with patience of God. My brothers and sisters, the Lord has spoken. And I pray that the church can say amen. I leave you with this. Trust your heart to God. Trust your heart to the Lord. He knows what he is doing and what he is doing is certainly for good and for his glory. Did you hear me? Trust God. We're going through this. It's difficult. It's difficult for families. It's difficult for parents trying to teach their children and still trying to work from home. It's difficult. It's difficult for families whose children only had lunch and breakfast at school. It's difficult for those who are, are dependent on a stimulus check and then now they're being tricked about it. It's difficult. But tonight, for those who, you, those who hear me, be a witness to somebody. Trust your heart to the Lord, not to man. Man will fail you. But just keep the faith. Never, never cease to pray. Walk upright morning, noon, day, and night. He'll be there. I guarantee you he'll be there. Oh, my God. So trust your heart to the Lord. He knows what he is doing. And what he is doing is certainly for good and for his glory. And is marvelous in his eyes. I say to you tonight, when you follow Christ, you can't lose everything. He will get us through this. Trust him. He will get us through this. And when we come out of this,
I said too, uh, some of us going to be so wild. You remember growing up and, and, and some of the parents were so strict on their uh, daughters, especially. And they say, oh goodness, so-and-so let their daughter out. She just as wild as a buck. A lot of us going to be wild. A lot of us going to be so excited to get up out of here. But do know in the meantime, God is working it for our good. So much is happening for our good. Trust your heart to the Lord. Tell the Lord tonight, God, I give you my heart. Let my heart be a sanctuary. Let my heart be a place where you want to dwell and find rest. Find his promises. Hide and find his providence and find the presence of God and do it with patience. God loves you. God bless you. God keep you. And may heaven forever smile upon you. I ask now, though we part from one another's faces, hallelujah, and presence, we never part from his presence. I ask that when you lie down tonight, you shall not be afraid and your sleep shall be sweet. Now may the love of God, the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, Oh, rest and rule and abide over everyone under the sound of my voice. And God, I ask you again to let the bloodline encamp every dwelling, every home in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. I ask these things and I benedict in your name. Amen. 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 Go in peace.